December 10, 1868, The Guernsey Times, Cambridge, Ohio. Killed by a meteor. A correspondent writing from Sydney, New South Wales, gives the following particulars of a remarkable accident. On the night of the solar eclipse, a great deal of electrical disturbance was observed, and all through the month, meteors have been seen almost nightly. Just after the eclipse, one of the most singular accidents, probably that ever occurred, took place. As the schooner Urania was passing through Crawley Head, about half an hour after midnight on the 18th, a meteor, described as being like a ball of fire, immediately over the vessel's stern, exploded with a loud report like that of a heavy piece of ordnance, and killed the steersman, a man named Sales. Everyone on board felt a violent shock, like that of a volcanic battery, but no one except Sales was seriously injured. Sparks of fire were scattered all about the deck, and the flashes of the meteor was so bright, the steward, who was lying in a berth below, saw the fire through the caulked seams of the deck. His cabin was at the same time filled with smoke, which blackened some paper lying about. The paint on all the aft part of the ship was discovered similar to what it might have been had the ship been smoked with charcoal. A peculiar, indescribable smell was perceived for some time after the explosion, and a quantity of flakes, like the soot from a steamer's funnel, were scattered about the deck. The meteor apparently traveled with the wind, which was from the south. The body of sails, the man who was killed, appeared to be blackened, but showed no other marks of injury. October 20, 1906. The Afro-American Ledger, Baltimore, Maryland. A phone girl blinded. Deprived of her sight by electric shock at switchboard. Utica, New York, special. An accident which will probably result in Miss Mary Lewis, a telephone operator of the city, passing through life deprived of her sight, occurred while the young woman was seated at the switchboard in the home telephone company's exchange. She received a severe electric shock, which rendered her unconscious for a time and left her totally blind. Miss Lewis says she had the receiver at her ear and was holding a connecting plug in the right hand when there suddenly passed before her eyes a flash and she knew no more until she regained consciousness some time later. Surgeons who have examined the girl's eyes say that her condition as a result of an electric shock which paralyzed the optic nerves and will probably result in permanent blindness. October 19, 1918, Spokane Daily Chronicle, Spokane, Washington. Start car, then close lift door? That's cause of accidents in elevators, cities told. May stop practice. Starting elevators and closing the door at the time of starting is a pernicious and dangerous habit, according to elevator inspector Charles J. Vetter, who this morning recommended to Commissioner J. H. Tilsley that the city compel building owners to install automatic safety devices to prevent the practice. Mr. Vetter's recommendation followed an investigation of the accident in which Virginia Getty, five-year-old daughter of Mr. and Mrs. H. W. Getty, was seriously injured in the Hutton Building Elevator. From all the information I can learn, the serious accident to the little girl can be directly charged to the pernicious and dangerous habit of elevator operators of starting the car and closing the elevator door at one and the same time. Often, and very often, the car is from three to four feet above the landing before the door is closed. I have frequently drawn attention to this and pleaded with employers to warn their operators and, if not heeded, to discharge them. It would have a wholesome effect to discontinue this dangerous practice. 
The objection is always raised that it takes too much time and impairs the efficiency of the service. But does it pay to gain a few seconds time if every now and then life and limb must be sacrificed? Commissioner Tilsley stated that he would consult building owners before taking action on Mr. Vetter's recommendations. January 1, 1919, Urbana Daily Democrat, Urbana, Ohio. Trolley car runs wild. Baltimore, January 1. Two persons were reported killed and 10 others seriously injured early today when a trolley car descended a steep grade at terrific speed, jumped tracks at an intersection, hurtled the sidewalk, and crashed into a building occupied as a saloon and dwelling, completely demolishing the front part of the building and damaging an adjoining house. The accident was due to failure of the brakes to work. The crew and passengers of the car were buried in the ruins of the saloon. They were extricated by a wrecking crew, police, firemen, and soldiers. January 16, 1919, Urbana Daily Democrat, Urbana, Ohio. 15 killed in accident. Tank containing 2 million gallons of molasses explodes. Boston, Massachusetts, January 16. A huge tank containing 2 million gallons of molasses on the premises of the Cuban Distilling Company on the waterfront, exploded at one o'clock yesterday afternoon, killing, it is believed, 15 persons and injuring at least 50 others. Upon hearing of the extent of the disaster, Governor Coolidge appealed to the Department of the Northeast for troops to patrol the district and assist in rescue work. The force of the explosion wrecked the building on the North End playground adjoining the distilling plant and also wrecked the overhead tracks of the Boston Elevated Railway in front of the plant. The elevated, at this point, is double track, running between the North and South Railroad stations. The concrete pillars supporting the elevated tracks were smashed and the structure itself for a distance of 50 feet was left hanging in the air, completely tying up traffic. The explosion exerted the force of a cyclone the wind generated by the blast overturned a trolley car, an automobile, and an auto truck like 10 pins. November 9, 1922, Dawson Daily News, Yukon Territory. Offers to exchange living for the dead. San Francisco. Charlie Buckley, electrician, who while it is alleged being intoxicated, killed Marion Newton, aged four years, with his automobile last Wednesday, offered to give his own child, Isabel, aged five years, to compensate the parents. Marion's mother refused the offer. Mrs. Buckley, who is also charged with intoxication, concurred in the offer. January 